Hello, and welcome to NOLA RUG. This is a meeting recap from February 20th, 2015, Navisworks 101. My name is Ken Colgan. I'm with CAD Tech Seminars. You can find us on the web at thebimguys.com. Uh, I will be doing a meeting today or a recap of the meeting we did on Friday on Navisworks 101. We'll hit the highlights of the meeting in this video, so if you missed it or you were, uh, we covered too much stuff too fast, hopefully this recap will help out. I'm going to go to the next screen now, and you'll see here NOLA RUG. This uh, user group is based in New Orleans, and if you want to find out more about us, you can join us and get linked in here to join the discussion. You can also go to nolarug.com. This Navisworks presentation is done by myself, Ken Colgan. My background is I'm an architect. I'm also doing do Revit and BIM consulting. That's pretty much what I do full time now. Uh, we do everything from Revit training to coordination of models, etc. Let's check that out right now. Here's our website. You can see here uh, the BIMGuys.com, easy one to find. As you come down here, you'll see we have. Uh, what do we do? We do Revit and AutoCAD training. We also do Navisworks training. So if you're interested in any of those training types, just go ahead and click right here. And all of our classes are listed. If you're looking for something in particular, feel free to call us. We can do custom classes uh, if needed in any particular area. I'm going to go back. Uh, what we also do is we do project coordination. This is where we take projects from multiple groups and we blend them together and we do clash detection. We have meetings uh, on a set date. We discuss where the clashes are and then we get them resolved and move forward. Uh, it's a, a process that takes many weeks but we go through and toward the end all the models should be in coordination and when the shop drawings are produced or the construction documents there should be minor or minimal uh, bumps in the field. We also do model creation. Model creation is we do renderings for architects and we also do shop drawings for uh, just about anyone and models. So whether it's a rendering or if it is piping or plumbing or HVAC work, we can handle it. We have a team of people that work with us now and uh, any model, well, we can do it for you. We also on the head of this website, we have blogs, videos, etc. So if you want to learn more about us, check out our site. Um, I'm going to come down here and also mention uh, the free SBET training. We offer free Revit and AutoCAD training through the SBET or SBET program through the Louisiana Workforce Commission. If you want to find out more about that, you can call our office and Janelle in our office can uh, talk to you about it. You can also hit this link on our page and it will give you uh, some information about that. So that is who we are and what we do. Now let's jump in and get back to the presentation. Now when we did the presentation at the AIA office in New Orleans, we spent about four minutes on topic. Uh, there, this class usually lasts between one full day and one and a half full days, depending on uh, the topics covered. In this list of topics, we're going to cover what is Navisworks, merging files, getting around, running a clash detection, file types and working with Revit, fixing the problem in Revit, and then using Revit's clash detection, or refresh the Navisworks models, rerun clash detection, and note the problem's fixed. Navisworks also does uh, animations and also does timelines and you can mix these together to do some pretty fancy stuff. But uh, being that I want a short time period, I'm just going to cover uh, these topics here and they may even be shorter than they were at the actual presentation. I'm just going to try to get into the highlights. So let's jump in. This here is Navisworks. Now if you've never seen Navisworks before, what it is, it's a tool that lets us visualize and also see how things interact in our models. Now, what makes Navisworks powerful is that it'll do a handful of things. Now, it's not a creation tool. You're not going to do any creation in this application. What you're going to do is you can compare things, you're going to quantify things, you can even create, the, as I mentioned earlier, timelines and animations. So, the first thing you'll notice is I'm going to hit the shift middle mouse button, very similar to Revit, and notice how fast I can spin around this building. Uh, that's another feature about Revit. What it does, it actually converts about 60 different file types and it converts it into an NWC, which is a Navisworks cache file. That file can then be loaded into Revit and notice how fast we can spin around. So, 
it's an optimized file written to work with Navisworks. Now I spun this thing around, you'll notice how I spun it around pretty quick. Now here's a couple of tips if you want to try this out when you get back to the office. You'll notice I'm holding the shift, shift button down, and I'm squishing or pressing down the middle mouse button or the scroll button. At that point I'm doing the orbit very similar to AutoCAD or Revit. Now if I want to spin around a particular point, here's the tip. If you actually select on that wall, that becomes my new pivot point. Now I'm going to hit shift, middle mouse button, and notice that's pivoting around that point. So it's a neat little tip to know if I need to spin around. Let's see if you look at this little um, object up here on the roof. Now I can click on it, and you'll see it kind of zooms in a little bit on it. Now if I go down here to, let's say, home, if I had the select key highlighted, if I would have picked on it, you'd see it turns in green. Now even though it turned in green, that becomes my new pivot point. Now if I pick here, it's green, but watch when I spin around. That's a trick also in Revit. If I have Revit open, which I do, I'll go to Revit right now, and here we are. Let me kind of minimize this. I'm going to drag this tab and lay it on top of this one, and they're actually going to stack. You'll see they stacked and they tabbed out down here. Now if I highlight this wall, right, and then I do a shift middle mouse button, that wall becomes the center of my orbit here. So that let's go ahead and open this up a little bit so we can see it's being cropped out. Let me just pull that down. Now I, this is actually uh, Revit, so I don't know if you're familiar with all these applications or not, so I'll try to explain as much as I can as I move through. Now if I pick that door, and then I hold a shift, middle mouse button, see that door becomes the center or pivot point. Uh, that's the same in AutoCAD. All three work the same, which is quite nice. Now let's jump back to Navisworks. So selecting the object does that for us, so getting around can be easier. We can also click here uh, and spin around, nice and neat. If you want to zoom out or zoom in, you can use the same tools as you've done before in Revit. If I hit the little uh, cube here, right, a little view cube, we go ahead and hit the little house, and you'll see it'll spin us back to our original orientation. We can also go top view. You can do south view. All these little things that we could spin around before, again, rolling your mouse out, rolling your mouse in, zoom in and zoom out. So some way, quick ways to get around in the application. Also, if we've saved views. Now, in Revit, you can save your views in 3D. I'll go to that quick. So here we are, and if I go to my browser, I could save views like, let's say, the break room cabinets, and I click on it, and it goes to that location or front entrance perspective. Uh, and you can save those views. You can do the same thing in Navisworks. If I go up top to viewpoint, and I drop this down, you'll see I can come in here and actually zoom in and take a look. Let's say overall, and it's going to spin to a certain view. Someone else set these up. This structure, see underneath the building, and then some missing door. So there we go. So we can actually uh, put the notes in where we need them, and tell, uh, and that makes it easy for us to spin around. Now the reason we get kind of weird here is I didn't click on anything. So what I want to do is I'm hit escape once or twice. I'm gonna go up top here to home, and I'm gonna hit select. Now if I select that that column, you'll notice that now that's gonna be the, my actual center point. Now if it picks up a whole bunch of stuff, don't panic. If I right click in here, you'll see it says select last geometry or resolution. Depending on what it's set to, it'll pick different things. So see it's picking smaller items now depending on the setups that I have. Now I can also put my cursor over something and roll once or twice. That becomes the pivot point. That's one I use often, just rolling the mouse. I don't have to actually pick on anything. It's a lot more accurate. So if I come right here and I roll that mouse just a little bit, see it's right on that floor. So that works out really well. Uh, I like that a lot more. So that's some easy ways to get around. Just remember the view cube. Uh, remember your presets. And also um, that little trick, hover, roll your mouse one click, uh, that becomes a pivot point, shift middle mouse button. So easy stuff there, we'll come out here, go back to the full model, and it zips us out nice and neat. So an easy way to get around. So I want to mention those as we, we zoom around. The next topic I'd like to hit is walking around. Now Revit has similar tools, you can walk around and so does 3D Studio Max. So we'll take a look at them now. Now as I mentioned before, I'm going to put my mouse in a point, I'm going to roll it once. Now I click on the screen, roll it once, that becomes my pivot point. I'm going to continue to zoom in here. Now at one point I may want to start walking around the building, so I'm going to get in kind of ground level here. Now if I shift middle mouse button, see I can kind of pivot around, get about where I want it to be. Now over on the side here we have this thing, this navigation bar. Now on the navigation bar we have this, we have this little thing called full navigation wheel. Now if you want to use this, you can click on it and notice this navigation wheel, fire it up, is the same navigation wheel that is in 
Revit. Okay. So if you like this, you can use it. Now I'll use this one first, and then I'll use the other one. When I hit the walk button, I click hold, and you'll see I can start to move forward. And I'm walking. Now currently as I'm walking, I'm just going to blast through that glass, depending if I have a setting turned on or not. And see, I just pop right through it, and I'm in the building. I can turn left or right, which is pretty cool. I continue to walk around. So uh, that's the one I'm mostly used to because I'm spending most of my time in uh, Revit. Now within here, it gets pretty easy. You see it says walk, right? Click hold and you start to move forward. Notice the little graphic here. As I move outside of the graphic, notice that my I start to move and that's pretty cool. Now I then start to move backwards and we back up. You move to the left and the right and that works pretty smoothly. Uh, this is the one that, again, I said mentioned works best for me. Now we have some other cool things here. See up and down and we also have pan. So we can actually hit up and down and when I hit up, see I actually go up like I'm on an elevator and I go up to the next floor. Bloop, here I am, next floor. Now within this, you'll see it says look. Now look is your head. Now if I click this and I lift, I'm, I'm clicking, I'm moving my arrow up, I'm looking up. My head's actually going back right now. And I look down, I pull back toward me, and I look left and right. So as you can see, pretty easy to do there. Now uh, some of the other features that are here. now. Notice that was pretty cool. Let's go back to Revit. So here we are in Revit. Let's go back to a floor plan. Floor plan reference. And let's go back to furniture plan so I know where I'm standing. And I'm going to set up a camera. Now I drop this down. Camera. Pick a point, And I stand and I pull through the building. I want to pull through the building. That way I have a good depth of field. Now if I want to look left and right and all that good stuff, I can. Um, there are some features here by holding shift middle mouse button down. But see, I don't have a lot of control. I'm kind of, mm, I'm not exactly sure know where I'm going. So I'm going to come over here, and I have the the navigation wheel up. Now, if this is closed, don't panic. You can go to View, okay, User Interface, and turn on my navigation bar. Now I'll pick on navigation wheel, and here we are. So at this time, I'm going to hit Walk again, and I, I again look at the graphic. Looks just like in Navisworks. I start to move around. So turn to left, turn right, and we walk around the building. Now notice I'm speeding up and, and slowing down. These settings are actually available in Navisworks and in Revit to adjust. So let's zip around here. Let me stop. Go to the big R. When the big R drops down, now I'm running three or four applications at once, so this may take a moment. I'm going to go to Options. And we come over here, and you'll see one that says Steering Wheels. And I can pull this down. Now I have no idea why it goes between 0.1 and, and 10, not 1 to 100, but that's not my doing. But I'm going to pull it way back here like that and I hit OK. Now what that's going to do is now when I do to my wheel, move it into place and I hit walk. Now when I move, I move at a more realistic speed. I'm not going all crazy. So I adjust the throttle pretty much and now as I'm walking around I'm a bit more comfortable as I move. Same thing as before, up down we jet up to the second floor like so and then we can look around by using look, look left, look right. Now one of the cool things is if you're with a client he says, oh I want to go back and see what we were working on before. There is a rewind. You can hit rewind, uh, be kind, rewind. And you can actually back up to wherever you were as you went through those videos as you can see there. So uh, kind of a neat little tool. And this is called uh, the navigation wheel and it's on the nav bar. Back in Navisworks you have the same thing. Now Navisworks actually has some other fun tools that are in here. So I'm going to close this little box right now. And if you want to see some settings, you can drop this down. Notice all kinds of things here, including steering wheel options. So you can adjust it right here. You don't have to go to the original place I showed you a moment ago. So that's all nice and neat. I'm going to close that out. Now the next one is called walk. Now walk is very similar. I click on it, and we walk forward. We walk backwards. You're like, hey, well, that's almost the same. Well, it has some uh, more advanced features. Now I'm going to back up here a little bit. And I'm going to try to go up them stairs. And my uh, my walking capabilities in these applications are not that good. Now, if you're a gamer, well, you're probably really good at this stuff, but I'm not. Now, I'm going to adjust some of these things here. Hit back on the wheel. And I'm going to drop down a little bit because I'm a little high. Up, down. I'm going to drop down a little bit where I feel comfortable. Okay. Now, happy with that. We're going to come back to this button guy. Now, when I drop it down, you'll notice there are some options in here. There's one called Collision and Gravity. And what Collision does is Collision is when I walk toward the side here and I try to go off the balcony oh, actually let me off the balcony but notice I'm hitting the glass I'm not sure why the balcony didn't uh, hold me back there maybe I'm too high so uh, as far as, uh, now it won't let me back on there so there we go so um, 
we're back on. Now I'm going to try to uh, go ahead and turn on gravity now. When gravity, when I start to click, it should drop me down. See now I'm hitting the ground. So now as I start to move, this is when gravity gets kind of cool. If I come over to these stairs, you'll see they're solid, right? Now if I start to hit the stairs, notice what happens. Watch, watch what happens to my little guy. See he's stepping up. Look. Notice I'm hitting thump, 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 thump. So I'm actually walking up the stairs. So it's a nifty little addition that you can do in Navisworks and walk up the stairs. Now if all is if all is good, uh, I won't fall off the balcony. Notice I'm hitting the edge, and I can turn around and keep walking. So kind of a nifty little tool here. We can stop. Now you'll see lots of stuff in here that we can uh, mess with. We'll come back over here. Um, you have crouch, third person. Third person's kind of hokey. There's your little man, and you can walk behind your man. Uh, now if you're into that pretty heavy, that's kind of cool. You can even change the avatar to something different. So uh, it's not actually right there. It's good. That's actually the floor information. But uh, some kind of nifty Kino stuff. If you really want to know what that is, you go back up top. We'll go to uh, options. And then if you start to dr drill down here, um, under one of these tools, you have the abilities to go ahead and, uh, and change what your avatar looks like. And I apologize, I don't actually remember where it was. Let's see here, uh, navigation bar, use classic walk. Well, one of these actually in here uh, has the, the ability for you to change that to somebody else. And I don't remember exactly. So, no big deal there. Not a big fan of it anyhow. So we're going to go ahead and turn him off. So that is how you get around in uh, Navisworks models. Uh, the last little tip is what it looks like. You'll notice currently it has a realistic look. I can come over here and you'll see it has modes. We can change different lighting things. We want to change lighting if the lighting set up differently. Notice it's looking a little different now using a different lighting setting. Um, we may just hit full lights. Uh, again, getting a little bit different look depending on what, what we adjust there with the lighting. It's kind of burning our eyeballs now. I'll come down here. We can also go to shaded. Uh, shaded may be used a lot more in uh, when you're doing clash detection, etc. There's a wireframe. Uh, that's an interesting one and then hidden line um, so chances are you'll be bopping between shaded which is like this and also uh, full render again adjust the lighting um, however you want uh, to make it work best for you so just play with these and uh, see what works best so in the next video we'll get in a little deeper so this is one of about four videos uh, hope things are going well